Hey, today I'm going to show you a little interesting thing here on how to play with your data book. Actually, how to use your data book. And uh, let me grab my box here. This is mine. Um, so, one, a couple of things I want to show you first about these data books. First thing to note you got the pages. This one's for uh, 200 yards. Probably the most important thing when you're zeroing your gun that you need to take a look at and remember. See these numbers down here in minutes? So if you were to fire a shot, and this, was, this target was at 200 yards, or if it was a 100 yard reduced target uh, also, you can fire a shot and let's say you fired your shot and it hit right about there. Okay? So you would look on these grid lines, there are grid lines on here, you use these grid lines and read the number of minutes oops, that you need to dial in order to get to the center. So if you were to say, hit out here in the eight ring, okay, it's basically saying here that you need to come four minutes up and two minutes right, okay, two, four, you use these, and all of these data books have these kinds of reference markers that you can use to get yourself zeroed up. So essentially, if you know how to use your data book and know how to use these hash marks that are built into them, um, you can get into the target off of one round, second round to confirm, and then you're good to go, which is why you get two ciders in NRA matches. First one off the dope, one to correct for the conditions, and then you compete. EIC matches, you don't get any of that. You got to know where your gun is shooting. Okay, so for that, you need to do some workups. And I'm going to show you, just for grins, uh, the workups that I was doing in 2017, which is. Uh, when this stuff came around. And what you see here is there are a lot of notes that go along uh, with this. And I use my data book as a combination of a uh, recording book and a um, notebook. So I write things to myself in the margins of, uh, of the book and also um, work on where things are shooting. You got your um, shots right here. This was done at a range, uh, my home range, before going up to the California team practice range. And so you get your little dials and all that kind of stuff set up, what you want to do, um, and uh, you know, you got things that break it in the middle, all that kind of stuff that are uh, written in the margins. And you know, which basically reminds you of what the process is that you're going to be attempting to use as you go and do this. This particular one was shot on a 100 yard range, which is a reduced course, and uh, that got me ready to go up to the next page, which is what you do when you get to um, this was at Koalinga. And by then, what, what I'd done is I'd taken the data from where the gun was at before here in terms of the settings for the sights and I had re-zeroed uh, the turrets because this was a scope gun and we set the thing to zero zero went up to the other range uh, up in the middle of California a place called Koalinga and what you do here for practice is you shoot strings of 10 um, and you fire them blind so you're not looking there's nobody pulling the stuff down you just fire for process and you concentrate on your process steps that you are doing you know stocking a number one notch high on the shoulder come up on a target move using the shoulder only all that kind of stuff um, focus on the reticle these are notes like I said I make to myself while I am going through this and off you go back and forth you fire two of them and basically what you're trying to do is on the whole is confirm that your baseline zero at 200 yards for offhand is in fact correct and because this is a scope where you can reset the turrets it is set to zero zero okay um, once you get to wherever it is that you're going um, which is Camp Perry um, 
you know, the offhand is kind of offhand. And uh, so essentially you do this kind of stuff for practice. Now, it's a little bit different when you get to, when you get to um, rapid sitting. So here is a sheet of what it looks like. This is rapid sitting in May of 2017, preparing for uh, Camp Perry. And um, essentially, again, you know, making notes to myself, um, where to put the UBR stock, which is uh, pretty much what you were doing in 17 if you were to configure a, um, a scope service rifle. So off you go, um, you uh, set the thing up um, and fire, make a test, uh, double check, move things around, and that was uh, the test at my home range at 100 yards. So, you know, you don't really care about the, uh, the setting. Then you get to Koalinga, team practice, and off you go. Zero, zero, all right, all right. And then um, uh, figure out where things are. The first shot's going out. Uh, you fire at your zero, zero just to check how things are going. Uh, don't even care about the wind because you care about whether or not your elevation is right. Elevation is dead on. Uh, it turns out there was about a minute left to wind that day. And um, so you corrected for one minute left and centered up on the second one again. So that basically says, yeah, pretty, pretty much it's a zero, that zero, zero works for 200 yards. That's day one of practice. Day two of practice, do it some more. In this case, just kind of playing around, thought there was one left of wind, trying to read the wind ahead of it. Uh, turned out there wasn't, and brought it back, and corrected to zero, zero, and basically we just shot that, and we were done, okay? Takes you to the next step. It's now a month later, and this is the um, match, the Oliver Hazard Perry match at, uh, Camp, Pen uh, at uh, Camp Perry, and um, so again, zero, zero, um, wasn't a lot of wind that day. And, um, you know, it popped in, oh, about a minute left uh, based on eight to 10 miles an hour, uh, half value wind uh, and cranked it out. You only get one string when you get to Perry and you get no ciders. So zero, zero, fired it off, um, got that, confirmed that that's about where I wanted it to be. So the correct zero for any future match at zero, zero, um, is okay. 95 to not the world's best, but you know, what the heck, um, that was uh, day one. It's essentially the Perry match or the Oliver hazard Perry match replaced what used to be called squatted practice at camp Perry. So, uh, now that's, uh, 716, nine, uh, 2017. And, um, next day shot the NTI, um, and, uh, or um, actually, um, I didn't record the P100, but shot the NTI, zero, zero. There was a quarter minute wind right that day, popped it, and uh, so you can see right there a recording of the, uh, the group that come out, and uh, it was worth a 98 and three. Um, again, you know, kind of cool. Um, this, this was shot with uh, 77 Sierras, and um, you know, not a lot of wind, uh, but uh, off you go. And that was a uh, rapid sitting uh, for recording. So you can see after that, you know, nothing, nothing left from Perry. Um, take you through 300 yards. These are 300 yard sheets now. And the work up here, uh, again, you can see this is at the, at the 100 yards at Burbank um, and uh, firing two strings. The key thing there is, uh, remembering where to put the uh, UBR stock because it moves and by 300 you're shooting prone so you want that stock fully out to get um, uh, maximum distance because your head's going to be slanted forward and uh, pop away. It was worth uh, on that practice run for uh, 220 shot, uh, two 10 shot strings, uh, 197 and two. Again, you know, it's okay. It's not the world's best thing in the world, but uh, what the heck, good for practice. Um, this is, uh, work it up to Koalinga again. So I had, uh, at that point dialing up, um, uh, getting, getting 
what the come ups are. And in my gun, a 77 grain bullet comes up two and a half minutes. Um, you dial that directly off of the scope turret. In this case, the scope turret on the gun, or the scope on the gun at that time, uh, was a, and still is, a, um, um, a Night Force Comp SR. So, um, pretty good scope, very nice reticle, easy to drive. Um, it's got that center, um, center, center circle in the reticle. That as long as you got that thing uh, circling the black, um, it's going to go in there. Um, and again, um, yeah, you know, little print, printed a little too far, and um, off you go. Uh, this was uh, one practice. Uh, kicked it again over because the wind, uh, but the wind changed, and essentially uh, that particular zero. Original zero held to the end on that practice day. Again, these are practice day dependent things because the wind is going to move you around. So particularly at 300, it's all about that last couple of seconds right before the targets go up, and you got your fingers on the pulse, and you're and you're just basically watching the flags, figuring out where it is you're going to fi finally dial that wind knob uh, before you get down and go shoot. All right. Um, this is uh, another practice day at Kolinga. Next day, conditions were pretty much the same. And you can see here, uh, stringing back and forth uh, with, um, it's normal at 300 that these things spread out a little bit side to side because the wind is going to undulate back and forth in terms of magnitude as you're going through your string. But uh, again, you know, it's not bad, 197.7. Um, I'll take it. Uh, uh, Coaling has got kind of fishy wind, so you just kind of live with that. Um, and then uh, first day at the Oliver Hazard Perry match, a month later, going to Camp Perry, put everything on. The wind that day was uh, kind of interesting. It's two and a quarter left, right? Uh, based on just watching where things are and, uh, you know, starting from your base. So now you're like, uh, you're way out there in terms of uh, stuff, but you know, it's centered up and um, uh, was a little bit low. So I toyed with the idea that uh, it wasn't two and a half up. It may have been three and a quarter um, just by looking again, right? By reading what it was saying on the sides uh, and then thought about it overnight. Uh, this is the last practice match. The Perry match is the last practice match before you go at Camp Perry the day prior to uh, cooking her off. Um, and then here, what I did is I put both the P100 uh, on one and the NTI on the next. That's the 17th and 18th, 2017, um, and uh, popped away. So this is 300 yards the next day using, essentially, what I did is I went a little conservative instead of going uh, three and a quarter, and probably should have gone three and a quarter. Um, to get a little further in and uh, the original wind zero because uh, it, it looked a little light that day uh, should have added a little bit more and uh, probably would have cleaned it but uh, it was good for a 98 and 2 and then the next day at the NTI on the 18th um, again um, got the wind a little bit wrong uh, and um, for some reason shot a little bit high um, and uh, it's a 5 to 6 mile an hour wind that day um, cranked it a little bit uh, and made notation up here uh, and uh, that was also good for a 98 and 1 so you know not a bad time uh, shooting Perry but uh, you know uh, these days people are shooting uh, cleans uh, pretty consistently at the top end and then they win them on X's so I'm not that good but uh, I'm okay and um, you know, I'm sh showing you my data book so you can see this is exactly the progression that takes place. These are pages as I go from my home range to the team practice range to the nationals, uh, page by page by page. And that's kind of what you want to record if you're keeping a data book as you're going along. Um, uh, some people record even more. Um, now we get to um, practice for 600 yards. Again, this is, uh, this is a 100-yard practice. So, you know, you can like... It's a, so the settings are actually two and a quarter down from my zero zero on the scope. And essentially when you're shooting reduced course practice, it's really position practice. So you're not really going after and trying to figure out what's going on as far as um, uh, the work that you're doing 
in terms of wind calls or anything like that. This is purely, is your position okay? And in this case, eh, it wasn't the best. But you know, what the heck, it's still, it was like a 191 and 5. Um, I've shot better than that uh, on uh, numerous occasions, so, eh, but it's enough. Now, here's the thing about um, 600 yards, and you know, it's my, my confession, is I don't really... <laughs> I don't really record anything once real matches start. It's uh, because you know what? The thing about 600 yards is that once, when you're reading a real match and you, you really need to be thinking about the wind and you need to stop thinking about your pencil, or at least that's my philosophy on it. And it took me a while to get to that level. Uh, other people are much uh, better at this than me and they're, they're able to maintain the discipline. But I'm a wind watcher. I love to surf. And um, so I just stop using the data book when it gets to that point and just shoot and um, as it turns out um, that philosophy of watching the wind more uh, more often than not it can give me the high score for the day at, uh, at a match um, uh, you know when you're out there shooting service rifle basically because uh, that's kind of who wins the game is who reads the wind better anyway this is uh, kind of a quick tour through my data book um, and uh, as, as you can tell, I took you through uh, what uh, the last season at Camp Perry was like for me. Um, I hope you learned something as far as the way that the progression of what you record as you do your workups going into the Nationals uh, kind of looks like, at least the way it looks like to me. Um, and I encourage you to um, do things like, you know, uh, write down notes. Uh, I write down good notes and bad notes in, in, on the uh, pages of things I see that may have nothing to do with the score but have to do with the process because process in the end and your mental outlook counts for far more than uh, the score on any given shot. It's what you learn while you're doing this that matters. Okay? Hope you learned something and uh, we'll talk to you soon.